Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about Publix and CIW and their fair food program. And so we're going to talk about what our policy is and uh, some background about both uh, institutions in this case, as well as the dilemma and how we analyze the moral dilemma, as well as how we approach it. So our policy is that Publix should continue to do what they're doing. They shouldn't join the fair food program because the fair food program, although it has great intentions, isn't doing what it set out to do ideally. It's missing some steps. It's um, not causing systematic change, but rather papering over the cracks. So now I'd like to give some background on the fair food program. Um, so it's an organization of tomato workers. Uh, it was formed in 2005. In 2011, it started the fair food program. And the way it works is the buyers will pay one cent per um, pound of tomatoes that they buy, and 75% of this money ends up going to the workers. But our issue with this is that 25% of the money doesn't go to the workers, but goes to other programs that aren't being used for the actual purpose. So we see this as inefficient, and we find that if uh, Publix were to work on this problem, they could get a solution um, that works efficiently and um, works with the actual supply side as opposed to the um, as opposed to the fact that it's two steps removed. So Publix, as you all know, is a southeast regional um, supermarket. So Publix isn't a company that would uh, shy away from this issue. It, it, it's a type of company that has excellent um, employee benefits. It, uh, it's famous for the work it does in its community. It donates a lot of money. So it's not a company that shies away from worker rights. So it's a company that can really lead and use its influence to get uh, other worker, uh, get its suppliers to work with them and get better wages and better um, working conditions for those suppliers. Thank you, Ben. Now, we want to discuss the ethical dilemma, which of course is whether or not Publix is correct in their decision to avoid membership in the fair food program. As we've said, we believe that they are. Now, first and foremost, we need to look at this from an ethical perspective, because while uh, business and legal considerations come into play, and we will discuss those later, primarily we are most concerned with being ethical in our decision-making process. And so how do we decide what is ethical behavior and what is not? We decide to do so through what is called a consequentialist framework. That is to say that the morality of an action is determined by the consequences it produces. We believe that Publix's uh, refraining from becoming a member in the Fair Food Program is better for Publix, it's better for the workers in Florida, it's better for the workers elsewhere, and it's best for the consumer. How do we determine? How do we come to this conclusion? Well, ultimately, as my, my colleague alluded to, the fact is that the Fair Food Program simply is not as effective in achieving the objectives that it sets out to accomplish. We disagree with the approach, but we don't disagree with the goals. But we maintain very firmly that when you have an inefficient solution to a very drastic problem, the public at large has a tendency to think, oh, that problem is being addressed, it's being worked on, things are being done about it, but in this case, not enough is being done. And so some people might be inclined to say, oh, well, perhaps an inefficient solution is better than no solution at all. But here we see an inefficient solution is actually worse than inaction. And we think that Publix instead ought to take a leading role in pursuing for both a supply side fix by working with their suppliers, working to get better wages and working conditions on that end, and ought to pursue government regulation consistent with the upholding of workers' rights and wages and working conditions so that these people can live a better life than they had before. We think that Publix is a philanthropic organization, it's an employee-owned organization. Of course it is sympathetic to the goals of those in need. We think that Publix has been misconstrued as a greedy, less than ethical corporation, and that perception needs to change, which is what's going to bring me to the financial and legal considerations. As I've said, a lot of people aren't really aware of the rationale behind Publix's decision. It's not that Publix doesn't wish for better wages and working conditions for those in Florida. It's that there ought to be those same improvements to people across the country, and if we pursue an inefficient solution in this area, 
then that sets a precedent for inefficient solutions everywhere else. We ought to remember that the tomato workers in Florida are not the only workers with adverse working conditions that need to be addressed. And the fair food program ultimately relies upon voluntary participation. And maybe Publix decides to join, maybe Walmart decides to join, maybe all these different organizations decide to join, but this is not going to ever be feasible on a particularly large scale. It is not a perfect solution, it is not enough. Publix hopes to have a standardized solution that is better for the people who need it most. And if this stance is explained in a comprehensive, wide-reaching way to the general public, we believe that the public at large will come to better understand the position and the PR crisis the public has been facing over their refusal to join the fair food program will be reversed. And people will see that Publix is not a corporation that is uncaring. It is exactly the opposite. It is a corporation that hopes for the best and was, is willing to work for the best, even when that might not initially be the most popular course of action. So it's important for us not to be reactionary and to instead pursue the best decision uh, and the public will thanks for this and our PR will improve. We do want to only briefly discuss legal considerations, because we don't think that there are too many. Um, just with any sweeping action, of course, people become concerned about this. There are bad working conditions at play here, but none of these bad working conditions are uh, something that the public is liable for as a corporation, and so we all have worry. Just to summarize, Publix is faced <coughs> today with a very serious policy decision. It is a decision that can determine the long-run future of that company because the public's perception is at play here and the public needs to be aware of how Publix uh, is making their decisions. It's not out of greed, it's not out of callousness, it's not out of a desire to save a buck. It is precisely the opposite. It is a desire to see sustainable change, real change, change that can be emulated across the country and not just remain localized to the tomato workers in Florida. This is an important dilemma. We think we've analyzed it from a consequentialist perspective that we personally feel is very compelling, and we hope that you will agree. Thank you very much.